Ini ya sih ini. Ya. God is wonderful. You slept well? Or you are still sleeping? You slept well? Good. Even me I slept well. Thank you for asking. <laughs> yes. So, we are continuing where we left off last week. Oh, where we left off yesterday. Right? And uh, we want to continue discussing about all that what they do, what they don't do. Amen. Then we see how we can minister through it. Sal, sal. Yes. No, that's telling me. My body is my body. I can run. Amen. Yesterday was a long one. On Friday. Yeah. 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 Uh, and just to learn them a bit more. Now, I want us to go to Ephesians 6. It's very important to go to Ephesians 6. That we understand that then the, the, this, this dynamics of all of, 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 of all us. Give me Ephesians 6 10. Fighting from verse 12. Ephesians 6 12, if you can from there. It makes sense. Because that's where I want us to start from. Then maybe we'll go back to uh, what we had left, the scriptures that we had uh, touched the other day. Good? You are together? What am I doing? Are we together? Okay. What happened there? Father, the Lord is from the Lord of the power of his might. Next verse. 11. Put on the whole arm of God that you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Right? Next verse. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against his politics, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, and against the hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Other by virtue, we in high places. God is good. Now, why we are reading this is that you might understand why. It's important for us to learn about all this. We don't war against flesh and blood. We are clear. We war against principalities, powers, rulers of this dark age, against spiritual hosts uh, of wickedness in the heavenly places. God is good. Now I defined a few weeks ago about the rulers, the, 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 the principalities, all those things. I said principalities are the ones who are in charge of an area. They are called territorial spirits. Okay? The general spirits. Again, these are the angels of fair. It's not a position that is, that is, that, is uh, that people are fighting for today now. That job was doing a long time ago. Now, when you're dealing with altars, spiritual warfare in its absolute right, spiritual warfare is a battle between two altars. That's what spiritual warfare is. Whenever you're engaged in a spiritual battle of any kind, you are fighting and it's an altar fighting another altar. That is spiritual warfare at the end of the day. So spiritual warfare, as much as we try and we say we are, we are, we are touching all this demon, this spirit, remember that they are not working from a vacuum. But every spirit that is against you or you are fighting in the spirit, be it a spirit of, of infirmity or death or whatever, whatever the spirit you are fighting in your life has a base, has a place it comes from. There's a place it derives its strength. So in the understanding of altars, you understand that principalities have their altars. So when I'm going to the spirit, I'm basically fighting the altar in my life. Strengthened by the altar of the cross is fighting that altar. You understand me? So if we are having a crisis or there's something that is not right, God is good. I want to give a simple example. There's a story in the Bible, a very famous story. But the lady was unwell and she came to Jesus. You remember? The lady was sick and came to Jesus. 
the gem of Jesus, Bible says, shall I share and speak of the family, but you'll see. And the Jesus says, Woman, thou art loose. How do you know it? Yes. When he tells a woman, thou art loose, or woman, you are loose, he's basically saying that the spirit that has brought illness into your life has been that what I have cast it out. God is good. So if a problem is an altar fighting you, that lady, for example, now, is that there's a spirit of family fighting her, but doesn't come from a vacuum. Good morning. Hello. Are you communicating? That is why we can never overlook to talk about um, our bloodline, our generation. You can talk so so to your head about all those things, but you cannot say without discuss about altars that might be there, which are there. Good morning. Hallelujah. And that is why myself, all these years of time ministry, there's something I've never believed. Ask me what I don't believe. Thank you for asking. I can tell you. <laughs> what I've never believed in my life is that thing they call hereditary disease. Hello? I don't believe that. Ask me why. Thank you for asking again. Now we can continue. Why I don't believe in this is because number one, disease in its own right is illegal. Can you start from there? Illness in its own right is illegal. Illness should not be a part of our lives. Illness is illegal. God is good. And in the illegality of illness, this week I've been a bit of a bit, I've been a bit angry, but I've been a bit very, very upside down. And it took me to a place of really sitting down and thinking. Because last time I've had any form of disease in a long, a very long time. And I had to go back and ask them a critical question. And the thing that I wrote was very simple. No, it is illegal. And illness in its own right is illegal. Because Adam was not sick. Right? He was not sick. So if there's a disease, the disease came as a result of Humanity making disease legal on earth. Are you communicating? So we are the ones who kind of came to a place and kind of say, Oh, you know my grandmother had diabetes, so my mom had diabetes, even me I have diabetes. Because it's in the family. But truthfully speaking, it is illegal. It should not be in the family. Of all the families, it chose your house. Good morning. Can we communicate? It is illegal. Because Jesus himself was never unwell. Never unwell. The time he was here. Good morning, David. How are you today? Yes. And that is why whenever he met a sick person, he ensured that the illegality of the disease could not span in their lives. But when he goes to the house of Peter, and Peter's mother in law is unwell, quickly Jesus does what? Removes the illegality. Illness is illegal. God is good. And you know what? In this class, and I'm, we are going to learn this as long as it takes. And we will be faith here enough. But none of us will never talk about diseases. Amen. Amen. But don't talk about diseases again. The last time, and think the doctor calls you to ask you, you're so lost. Good morning. Because I don't believe that, and I've been to places to pray, and someone tells me, you know what, Peter? I know this one, you have to pray for someone, and someone's going to pray for one. I was going to pray for them for the Lord told that this person was sick. I was going to pray for them and speak healing. So I'm telling them, are you unwell? And they say no. And I'm thinking the Holy Ghost is saying, I pray for you healing. And then you fear, ah, ah. In, no, this is just a hereditary disease. You hear my word? This is just a hereditary disease. And I've thrown my back and we got a discussion with but this person you know that the people boy called How do we make this legal? Because they say it's in the family. Who put it there? That's why I talk about altars. Someone put it there. And it's been living there. And people accepted it. And it became a family affair. Good morning. Are we communicating? Yes. I used to have very, very bad allergies. If there was a bit of dust like this, I was about a fish. Just a bit. And I remember when I went to a family doctor, he told me. But because my father had very bad 
sinus is a very bad allergies that it is in the blood. Good morning. And I accepted it by the way. But I discovered that it is an illegality. I was like, no, 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 no. I don't have my health allergies. No. Good morning. I will communicate it. I looked around when I the time that I've been diagnosed with high blood pressure. You guys remember? I said it. I said I have pressure. In the first of the day, was my mind is up, your father had pressure also. Your mother has pressure. Therefore, I'm not it. God is good. I told you here. Me, I refuse. I have blood pressure. I injected my blood pressure. God is good. I threw away the machine. And I've been well. I don't have pressure. I healed. Amen. I healed. What am I saying? We are talking about these things are the ones that express what the altar is about. We are writing about altars that we may know that spiritual warfare it is you against an altar. Are we together? Yes. And the one with the stronger altar always wins. Please write that down. Then you put that point. The stronger altar always wins. No matter where you go, you will always see a pattern and you will know quickly that this there is something wrong somewhere. It cannot be. God is good. God is good. God is good. Yes, because we must believe that God's design for our lives was not to be oppressed. That was never God's plan for humanity. That we are oppressed by a disease, oppressed by marriages oppressed by children, there is nothing as bad as that. That you have children who oppress you. God is good. Or you have a job that oppresses you. God never designed our lives to be life of oppression. That was never God's plan. It's the enemy who found a way to make believers believe it is normal to be oppressed. Good morning, everybody. So, we are thinking about all that. Principalities, powers, rulers, that is his need. What we are fighting now. A lot of things about orders. Write this down, this is number 12. It says, from where I stopped yesterday, an altar is a witness for you or against you. An altar is a witness for you or against you. Basically, an altar defines the parameters of spiritual interference. How much interference happens in your life is determined by the altar that is speaking. Good morning. An altar does what? With lessons for you or against you. It speaks for you or against you. But the altar stands as a witness in heaven and on earth that this is what it's about. Good morning. Good morning. Why is it? Let me give an example. Why is it this? That whenever those, I mean, those of you who are married or plan to get married, God is good. Let us focus. The salmon is about money. No money. You are talking about money. No money. No but let's take a moment. You see, the moment that you have gone to the place of, 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 of the moment you wanted to marry, let me take. They let me take it as as is as as we have been taught. The moment of saying, okay, I'm going to church and I might have uh, or I'm going to uh, someone, a priest, a pastor, whatever, to come and basically do what join you, right? The moment that blessing has been made over you, no matter where it is, the moment the blessing has been made. The thing that makes us become people say how relationships change. It was about when we were dating the uh, one source of relationship. When you got married, they stopped being patient. You know what that's already wrong? God is good. Right? Yes. Someone would say, oh, when you are dating, we used to really laugh about everything. Now we talk about issues. Good morning. Why are these transitions there? Why does it happen that there's a couple I met that have been staying together? It's very interesting. They have been together for 11 years. 11 years. And they really pushed. They were, I don't know who was pushing, I don't say, in the class. But one of them was pushing, 
I want a wedding. I want a wedding. I want a wedding. Eleven years. We got married on the twelfth year. Went to church, got married the twelfth year. Divorced by the twelfth and a half. Why? Why? I know a couple dated seven years. Seven years. You do this to them. Seven years. You go for ministry, they're all together holding hands. Everywhere. Going and holding hands. They used to do worship. Seven years later. Got married on the eighth. Divorced on the eighth and a half. Listen. Why was it so? That really blew my mind. But I realized something that the moment that the, the relationship became an altar, good morning, the moment the relationship became an altar, the mode of interference was redefined. Now, let me go to the human part of it. The mode of interference was redefined in two ways. Number one, these people realized something. That maybe this lady, let's take it as Miriam. Miriam has been deciding and has been kept in her mind all through that this fellow, the day we get married, some things have changed. But all through she has been she has been quiet. Maybe she found the guy was a stain smoker. God is good. Used to sleep inside the bottle. He tried to sleep inside the bottle. And that's how she found it. But Miriam was very quiet. They never thought about it. But the moment they got married like this, the parameters of interference changed. Now Miriam could ask questions. Where are you? Where did the money go? Who are you talking to? Before, she would not ask. If this guy took all his money and said, I'm going with my boys out and buy all his boys' beer, Miriam would just come and say, okay, me I'm at Bible class, good night, good night. Miriam and I wash the guy, me and that's not your portion. Yes, that is not your portion. <laughs> and so this guy is out there, blowing money. She never asked, she never cared. And they got married. Then we had began asking, you spent 10K yesterday on who? See how the guy begins to respond. You're asking me as why are you asking me now? Even he is shocked he's been asked. God has been asked, but the parameters have changed. The moment the altar has stood, parameters have changed. Good morning. Now, when you understand the witnessing, you understand something I talked before here. I talked about strongholds. There are some strongholds. I will to define strongholds for you. Strongholds work, of course, with these ones, but Strongholds are, 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 are spiritual, are, are the spirit that respond in your life at a particular moment because they have been provoked. Can I say that with simple English? I'm saying this that they can be a stronghold against maybe Eve getting children. Will she know? Will she know? She will not know. But the time that Eve is now married and wants a child, that stronghold rises. God is good. Are we communicating? There are people the stronghold maybe is at work. Maybe it was maybe the stronghold is against you building a house. You work hard, you work hard, you work hard, you put everything in place. But when it's just about to building the house, the stronghold rises. Now, a stronghold never it rises. It always stops by force that which you are not supposed to attain and to stop you from entering where you are supposed to enter. Good morning, everybody. Very important thing to do. Don't underestimate it. So there are strong ones that may be against any marriage. So when you are dating, they're okay. They are dating, you are dating, they are laughing with you, they're very okay. They're not bothering them. The day you come and propose, Mike has gone with his fear and someone will you marry me. That day the strong will say, it is a marriage. It is a marriage. Suddenly, things just begin to go wrong. The day that Mike said it's getting married. The moment he mentioned, the stronghold will come. Now, a stronghold is designed to fulfill 
or to stop your destiny, no matter the cost. Now, a strong one works with altars that have been lifted around your life. Good morning. So, if I'm on the verge of signing a contract and the struggle in my life, but has said you will never own or you never have, I mean, you never, you never, you never, be, I mean, you never hold one million shillings. You go up or come down, you never see a million in your account. God is good. If that demon is saying that, that stronghold now begins to cooperate with all other altars in your life. It can look at your family line and find that in the family line of, of my family. It will be very famous. The world grows you by that. Mike is standing here. Now, if behind Mike, there are all these altars standing, maybe there's an altar that his father is a generational altar. He's here. Right? I'll teach that one day. There's an altar, the generational altar itself has got its own things. There's another altar here that was risen, but it's built upon his way or something. There's an altar that Mike put for himself by mistake. He went to Machakos, and by mistake they gave him something. And I'm not saying Machakos out of any political reason. I'm just mentioning a place. God is good. <laughs> yes. So, there's a, he's going to Machakos, and another altar is there. Then there's another, there's another even of illness. That illness in the family somewhere. Now, this stronghold. When it wants to stop Mike, and Mike is supposed to move here, this stronghold does not work by itself. It will look for which altar will be the most effective altar to speak to, but can witness against Mike, but Mike does not get here. Now, it can decide and say, for the sake of Mike, let us lift an altar of infirmity, because there is disease in the family. There is a disease that has been in the family for 200 years. If we can provoke that disease, then Mike will spend his entire resources and time and energy fighting disease. But Mike was okay. Mike had never had a problem. But now Mike was just about to enter somewhere. So we said, let me coordinate with the disease. Hallelujah. Are you communicating? Are you learning something? I'm going to talk to myself. We are going together. So, what happens is that in your life, all these altars behind you are witnessing over your life. They are witnessing over your children. They are witnessing. They are speaking for you or speaking against you. But they are witnessing continuously. Good morning. So I must ask myself a question in my life. Is that, are there altars that are speaking or witnessing against my life that I do not know about? It might be the reason why I am unwell. It might be the reason why I went through a divorce. It might be the reason why I lost my job. It may be a reason why no one wants to see me. Are you communicating? Yes. Now, when I understand that in, in, in my life, I know an altar is witnessing, then I begin to lift my own altar in my life. Because the stronger altar always wins. So the stronger my spiritual altar, the stronger I'm able to break this altar. Let me tell you something. Like Many people are not stuck, and I've done this for many years until today. People are not stuck because they don't plan. People are not stuck because they don't work hard. Hello, let's be honest. I know people who work extremely hard. Some of you are in jobs that will work harder than you. But there are places they can't get to. And the more they are working hard, the more they are being frustrated. Yet the truth is, I must think, is there an altar with this against you? Can you read the Bible? The Bible is a good book, right? Genesis 31. And 
will up and say, This is a witness between me and you this day. Therefore, the name of it called Kali, the first. And Mizpah, for he said, The Lord watch between me and you when they are absent from one another. Very important here. Jacob and Laban are at a place they are about to part ways. They sit together. They raise an altar, the two of them. And they raise an altar. They offer sacrifice to that altar. Then they say, but go back. May it be a witness, the one he bears altar. May it be a witness between me and you this day. They lift an altar and say, Let this altar be a witness between me and you this day. But we have agreed on a few things. That when you become strong and mighty, you won't come to me. God is good. Next verse. The Lord watch between me and you when we are absent from one another. Now, if they are not there, what do we learn about all that? What do you learn? From that scripture? For Max. Okay? Altars are active even when you're not there. Good morning. Happy New Year. Are you communicating? Altars are active even when you're not there. Because you don't know it is there, that doesn't mean it's not working. It is working. So altars speak in your presence and altars speak in your absence. God is good. Sasa, let's look at something. How do they be blessed? Number one, write this down. All altars speak through their sacrifice. Every altar speaks through its sacrifice. If my life is a sacrifice, then the altar in my life speaks through the sacrifice of my life. Good morning. We are together. So, number one, all altars speak through their sacrifice. Every altar will be blessed through its sacrifice. So if there is no sacrifice, then the altar is not an altar. God is good. God is good. Psalm 36 to 5. We'll read this on twice. That is 65. This is one of the most important scriptures to talk about. And I said, uh, It came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take your father's young bullock, give the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that your father has. God is good. God is good. Gideon is being called by God. Now, this is a very powerful scripture behind the scenes. Walk with me. Eve has been called by God. What is according in this context? There is something God wants to give you. So, there's a word God has released over your life. Now, God is telling us they are in the seeds. So, Gideon has been called. Yeah, good. When Gideon is called by God, God knows that Gideon has called you, yes. But there is something that will eat you that you won't go where you want to go. Gideon tells God a few things here. Gideon tells God, number one, I come from a poor family. Number two, I come from the smallest tribe. And number three, in my father's house, I am the least. God is telling Gideon, I'm taking you from A, I'm bringing you to B. Now, I'm going to ignore all those things. Because the problem in your life, Gideon, is why doesn't God say, Gideon, I have called you, proceed. By virtue of called you, this altar has gone down. God is good. Why? Why does God tell Gideon, ensure you take down the altar of your father? Because God knows that this altar is speaking. So Gideon is moving forward, but the altar is still what? The altar is speaking. 
the altar is speaking. So God knows if you don't bring down the altar now, then where I am calling you to, the person I want you to become, you will not become because the altar of your father will speak about you. It will witness for you. But if I say to this class, that I may have never raised an altar. In fact, I have not raised any altar. That's it. What is good. But, do I know about my grandfather? Do I know about my great grandfather? I don't know. Now, give you as a privilege, bring down the altar of your father. Bring it down. Because this altar stops you from going there. Now, us, we don't take time to destroy the altars that were built by those who went before us. So God has released a huge destiny of a Miriam's life. But Miriam, the altar that speaks in her bloodline, oh, oh, really at the back, is so strong. And if Miriam doesn't take out that altar, then this promise of God does not be get fulfilled. So at times people say that God made a promise to me, it did not come to pass. But it's not the problem. The problem is there was an altar that was speaking again at what God wants you to do. Good morning. Are you communicating? So the altar is speaking. And so you find that you are putting things together. God said, hey, altar will go here. Altar, this will happen. But there's an altar speaking. Hallelujah. Good morning. Why is it every single time when an angel of God appeared to someone in the world, they always offer a sacrifice and make an altar? Ask yourself that question. There is no time in the Bible when Manoah is getting a word about Samson. What do they do? They raise an altar very quickly. Because God has said they'll have a child. But the altar in the family does not want her to have a child. So they raise another altar to tear down the altar of barrenness. We are communicating here. Good morning. Or am I talking in Greek? You are together? Good. So you must note that there is an altar that is speaking. Which one has a stronger sacrifice? Which one is speaking louder? God is good. Number two. Every altar has a dedicated human attendant. All altars have a dedicated human attendant. First King 13. It doesn't matter where it is, there is someone working. First is starting. I go through this class, go for the, the zones. 
Mais on pense, on a tout le temps dans la queue, il y a un autre qui est venu, il y a un autre qui est venu. Donc, il y a un autre qui est venu. Il y a un autre qui est venu. So I came and took the discussion. My father had not been throwing. So I come and I throw. The guy who was throwing was leading on throwing about 19, 20 meters. Then he came and threw 54 meters. So I threw once. I was told go. We'll go if someone gets there. So I went. We have to do other things. So I disappeared. Now that throw was enough. Took me to provincials. Provincials, again, the guy who was the best in Nairobi at that time was from, I think, Lanao or something. Threw, when he was throwing it, the best throw in three was three was three was three meters. Again, again. Fifty-six. Ah, I went for a walk. Now, I have to go for nationals. But here, the guy who can say that everyone who wins the nationals, any event in the nationals, they would go to France for something in the world of what? What happens? The event is set for nationals. Our teacher in charge of sports forgot to tell me that when we are in midterm, it's when the nationals are. So me I go I come back to school like that, 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 on, a, on a Tuesday, and the guy who said tells me, by the nationals were this past weekend. Like what? Like yeah. And you need to go and ask him. I, I, of course I need to go. But the guy who won this class, how far did he throw? See, he threw, I think, a fold. That way, I saw France going. It went. Now, I began to question this. Good morning. So, my dad took me. But I said, I've seen what you are, you are, you are, you are doing in school. Come. So, but that took me, brought me some spikes in there. That took me with the, with the, with the GSU guys. But I don't that's straight on 200 meters. 200 meters alone, um, I talked to one of the guys at the beginning, after the exchange, to get a scholarship. So, there. Yeah. So, we are flying up. So, there's some guys coming to the University of Pennsylvania. They're coming to scout. So we have already been hiking here, but I'm young, I'm running very fast, I'm running very fast, I'm doing very well. So there I am, I've been training hard, I've been training hard, I've been training hard, I've met these guys like four times, we have talked, we have talked, I've picked the course I'm going to do, the full scholarship to apply, I've seen me training, they know my times. But they were like, now, they are, are their games coming up, uh, let's see you compete with people older than you, but just for the sake of our own, Victor, I went to my friends. Yes. September, Pennsylvania here cometh I. So we get on the track and I run. The first bend, bend came on the first corner like this. My knee said no. My knee said no, and said no. And I sat on the track. I can never forget that old man in the bottom of Pennsylvania coming. Looking at me and telling me, young man, you're so talented. Why do you get to give us a I'm very sorry. I wish you best of luck. I said, it's a good thing. Good morning. Hello. How do you understand? Yes. Now I began to question what are these things? Okay, you know. I was thinking about it. You know. Fast forward better. I go to school. I began to go so I went to law, began to do law, began to do law. I got a chance to transfer and go to the branch of Birmingham. So I've done the guys in Birmingham, I've come, I've done an interview with them, all those things. And in fact, they give me a £2,000 scholarship. So I was to raise £6,000. My dad put me some money, of course. So my dad did this. My dad went to speak to uh, one of the principals in and asked him what can we do. Would your world used to go to Kotala Kumasi? So, for another point to the whole, this is a young guy here, uh, he needs a scholarship. So, Moody says it's no problem, let's do the farms. So, my dad, we were staying in Parklands at the time, my father comes, he's supposed to come from home. So, Saturday night, uh, me and my friends decided to go and assist with the broads and beat. So, we were really blank, we were really honest. 
we drank. And I was drunk. And I went to bed. I woke up at 2 in the afternoon. <laughs> I was to meet with the whole at 9 in the morning. 2 in the afternoon, I'm waking up. I'm looking at my phone, it's 2. And my, my phone has got like 58 minutes calls from my father. I'm sure my father never forgave me and did it. But no, I'm sure he never forgave me and did it. So now I'm ready. Now I have to come up with the story now. You know, I'm telling you now, you know, I was sick. Then I overdosed with, uh, with uh, cough syrup. Then now when I was with cough syrup, I, I slept. But that means it's just a plan. It's nothing else, it's just a plan. Now, if I look back and I draw that line, what, I, what do I see? I see opportunities that would have changed my life. Good morning. I see opportunities that, yes, all things work together for good. Right? They, want, they have to believe that, and that's how I have to hold on to. I enjoyed my life if I went to Birmingham, may I would have never seen that. I would have loved it. God is good. Good things came out of not going to Birmingham. God is good. Yes, I can't complain and say, no, no, no. If I look back now, I can say, I mean, maybe if I went, I don't know, maybe I would not be doing good, maybe I would have, maybe I would have run away from my body. But the reality is this, is that I had to sit now and I began to, I began to question, why is it that all these doors closed not because I wasn't talented enough? They didn't close not because I wasn't talented enough, not because I didn't train, not because I didn't work. Why did these doors close in my life? And they were closing on very silly technical things. Good morning. Are you communicating? So when I begin to walk with God, I began to question, what is this altar that is fighting my life that I cannot move to a new place? That I cannot advance? Are we communicating? And my father, it's very interesting, because my father traveled. My father traveled. He was used to say in the first one in the entire village, who used to travel. And my father traveled. But I remembered something else. Hello? I remember the story my dad told me once to take the class. My father helped uh, see me with a child with some things, some light for him, I don't know what. And a child at that time was head of health and civil service. When your child was a child, you know those When your child would say, whatever he says, he says tomorrow your wife will be gone. Those days. My father did some work for the child. The child was so impressed. Told my dad, what do you want me to do for you in the civil service? Anything you need, let me know. My father told the child, let me go and think about it. I'll come back and tell you. My father went and my father forgot. He forgot. You have been told by the head of the civil service. You are a civil servant. He is telling you, what do you want me to do for you? You are telling him, let me go home and think. Then you forget. Those are not altars. The day my father remembered when he saw on the news that the entire had been transferred. They said, like, ah, I never went back to see him. Tell me, is that normal? Is that normal? When that story my dad told me, I knew something. That there is someone attending somewhere to an altar. But it's there with one simple reason. That said, there's a place that Victor will never get to. Are we communicating? God is good. Have you got it? He says, Behold, the kind of man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord, and to Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar. To buy incense. Next verse only. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, O altar, that says the Lord, behold, a child shall be born out of the house of David, Josiah by the name, and upon him shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon you, and men's bones shall be burnt upon you. God is good. This person here is the attender of the altar. Every altar has a human attendant. God is good. Every altar has a human being next to it. If there's an altar in your village, there's a human being next to it. So when you're doing warfare and you're backing out and you're breaking down altars, you must be aware that you're also going and getting a human attendant on that altar. Altars don't go unmanned. 
In spiritual matters, there is no no man's land. There has to be someone in, in control. Number three, there is a guiding or supervising spirit in every altar. There is a guiding and supervising spirit. Translation is, if at all the altar that has been raised here, let's even take this practical. This is an altar. I am attending this altar, the human attendant. The Holy Ghost is the spirit that is in charge of this altar. God is good. Guiding and supervising. So, if you go to Judges 6 and 5, Judges 6, it says, Get to pass, uh, give me. Uh, which version do I want? I will give you a little translation. Yes. I have to forget the exact word. Yeah, this is good. That's all I want to it says, eh, take the second with this whole this is what I want you to read. And cut down their share pole standing beside me. Their share pole, Asherah was a goddess. Asherah was a goddess. So the altar that Gideon's father has built is here. Then beside there is a stick. An Asherah stick. That stick is the is the spirit that supervises and guides that altar. And that is why there are people who, if you go to these places, you know those places, you know them, those of you have gone, those places, those funny places, you know them. Okay, don't see those places. You find that there are guys who, when he stands behind a particular altar, it's a church of some kind, if he stands behind, he can even tell you the color of your, your socks. I've told them to say socks because of the camera. <laughs> and people flood there. But if you take that guy out of that altar, he can't. Because the spirits of divination are under here. So they tell you about you. They tell him, so he's just telling you, you know, you know, you know, you went, you came, and they are telling you things. They have no idea the spirit that is speaking. There is a guiding, supervising spirit under that altar. Every altar has a supervising spirit. If it's a godly altar, the Holy Ghost will be one supervising and, 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 and guiding it. So you find that there are people you see on TV, you used to see them. And you see that if you see next, you go where they are, you take things. Good morning. Those are times. I was sent by another lady. Her daughter was going to some family days ago. So I was sent by the mom to go see if the guy was genuine. So I went. Remember, I entered, I went in. It was a bit strange. I got in, I was observing, I was observing. Now I said, Don't do such work. Please eh? do Yes. Don't do such I will not go. So I went, I sat there for like 20 minutes, watch what we were doing. Then as the guy saw me, called me, I entered his office. I sat in his office. And he began trying to tell me things. And now, your wife, your wife uh, is in Mombasa. Eh? I'm not married. And I was in my wife, I said, Oh, you know, you, 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 you have a wife, she's very proud. I don't worry, I don't worry, I'm actually I'm busy. He began, Now, this, the, the, the work that you do, uh, I see your boss is, is really trying to to, 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 uh, to bring you down. You know, actually, I've not worked for the past three years. <laughs> now, the reality is this, is that whatever altars he had could not allow him to penetrate the altars in, in my life. Good morning. Let me give you another story. It's just funny. I'm not blaming really names because the person is here. But it's good. So someone in this class went for prayers somewhere. Family prayers. And these family places people do funny things. So we are times parents are the ones who take their kids to funny places. Only uh, at times parents. At times some pastors are parents when they do us. So parents went for prayers somewhere. It was all these funny things of people uh, pouring salt and entering inside the salt and out of salt, some trivial things. And so this person took a phone and recorded what this man was saying. 
I got the name everything one for one on the phone like this. Came with me to my office that prayed by the hear what that guy said. But I called him refused to pray. It refused. It's a dream. It refused. I I I I know I know the person is because whatever they were doing, the altar here. They cannot, that can start. It can be spoken here. God is good. Are we communicating? There is always a supervising spirit on every altar. No matter where you come from, there is a supervising spirit. And before you are going to war with an altar, you are fighting the altar, the structure. You are fighting the altar, the sacrifice. You are fighting the altar, the attendant. And you are fighting the altar, the spirit behind it. Are you seeing both four dimensions? You are fighting the altar, the structure. You are fighting the altar, the sacrifice. The altar, the attendant. And the altar, the provising spirit. When you are dealing with an altar, no, you are dealing with a four prong attack. So you just don't go for the altar alone. If you go for the altar alone and it's a mobile altar, what happens? It gets reestablished. God is good. God is good. Now, number four. Every altar is powered by the sacrifice of the human attendant. Every altar is powered by the sacrifice of the human attendant. Second Samuel 24, 24. Second Samuel 24, 24. But I have a little kind of surprise that you sound crazy. Listen. But they give you the reply to Arabna. No, I insist on buying it, for I cannot present bank offerings to the Lord my God that have cost me nothing. God is good. So David paid him 50 pieces of silver for the threshing from the oxen. Next verse. David built a mountain of prayer to the Lord and offered one of them as a piece of ice. And the Lord answered his prayer and the plague was stopped. What powered the altar? What powered the altar? The sacrifice that David put upon that altar. Now, Every altar is powered by the sacrifice of the human attendant. The human being behind that altar is the one who gives the sacrifice. A spirit cannot give a sacrifice. A spirit can give a sacrifice. Good morning. It cannot give a sacrifice. It is a human being that gives a sacrifice. Now, if this altar has been there generationally, how many sacrifices have been a period of time. And I'll be honest, that is why as much as there are people who have taken this teaching out of context, and I'm saying this because the whole world abused the whole teaching about giving offerings and sacrifice that are abused for their own gain. But the truth is this, that actually if you are fighting that altar, it is difficult and extremely difficult to go to war with an altar you're praying for someone to break an altar and they themselves don't have the whole sacrifice. It is difficult. There are people who of course have taken this out of context and have taken advantage of others. But it's there. But if you are putting altars, incidentally is if your faith and you are giving your own sacrifice is of the level to fight that altar, it makes it easier. I've done deliverance and the president of Umagunna come and look at their easy. There's no one who can move. Because the altar that is fighting you, someone has put a sacrifice. As a believer, I must ask myself a question. The question is, how much do I believe God? How much is God in control of my life? How much of God is sustaining me? Do I have a battle in my life that I think I can fight for myself? Because when we say that his Elisha is more than enough, I'm simply saying that God, 
I know there are things that might be fighting me in my in my in my in my life, but I know who you are and I know what you can do. I know you are the one who can stop this thing. But you see again, people have, have got the habit of, and I'm saying this respectfully, of taking God for granted. Yeah, I have faith. Hallelujah. I have faith. Yes. Let me just go. So that you are praying for Abba. You are not even. I can never forget this. And the issue in her house was so bad. It was so bad. Because you enter the house, a very beautiful house. And there was something like this. Okay, not like this. Something almost like this. Not, not, not this one. Something like this. Uh, this one is not the one I'm saying. <laughs> Something like this on the corner. Uh, you know where uh, the, the fireplace is? It's on top. It was there. Something like this. Very beautiful thing. When I entered the house, I noticed it. So I looked at it. I had never thought about that thing. I did not. So we sat. So quickly, she brought food. Those of you who know how I do this, I don't eat fast. God is good. I, I pray fast. I don't eat fast. I love eating. But when I'm doing ministry, I pray fast. I eat later. That's the case. <laughs> so she put the food on the table, eat. I'm really no, 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 so we, we, we stood when we are two gentlemen. We stood, we waited we for the husband to come. It's a long one hour. The husband had to come. The guy came to Santa. He was watching us. So we now begin to pray. We begin to throw fire from heaven and everything. Then I remember, I took water, prayed for water. Then I sprinkled, I just threw water on that thing. Instinctively. It's the Holy Spirit. Do you know? That cafe shook hmm? twice. One, two. Then it spun like this and fell down. The husband was sitting on the chair half asleep when you were praying. When that thing broke, he jumped like a lion. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And the guy began talking words that were very ungodly. The next thing we know, we are being from much. We are being from much out of that house. The guy turned red, he would have shot us. Me, I looked at him, my friend was a bit tough. My friend was like, No, we have to go. He says, I died for them. I did die for them. And I left. And so later on, this lady comes to see me and she asks me, uh, about the press, because now things went to just me. So, Victor, there's nothing, we, there's nothing that, that we, we can do right now because the, 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 the sacrifice your husband has lifted on that house is so big and so strong that we just can come there and start praying. We'll be lying for ourselves. I say there has to be a sacrifice on your own altar that is bigger than the sacrifice that is fighting. Who has a bigger God? Let's say the mommy let's back. Who has a bigger God? You see, you must remember that if there's an enemy you have, and an enemy fighting you, and an enemy challenging you, wherever they are seated, the kingdom of darkness does not sleep. It is believers who sleep. There's a lady I prayed for the West Stand here, she was at the worship, and she was giving me the story. And she told me, Victor, one of the most craziest things you don't, you believe us, don't know about as the worshippers. And the worshippers said that one thing they do is they are always, always on the job. They don't require one bit. If the worshippers are saying that it's medium that they want, they don't do it. They will work, they will work, they will work, they will work. I told you a story in this class some time back. Of a guy who wanted a senior job at one of this, uh, I don't know which, which uh, NGO because you might Google it. This guy 
was asked simple question and he went to these five places and he was asked a simple question he was told the level of promotion one to leave Africa and go lead this organization in Europe you have to give something give us something the guy was single no children said I can give my family I, 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 I am not give I said, can you give your, your mom he said in fact plus my dad plus my dad I'll give my mom and my dad take them that is the extent someone is willing to go to raise an altar for them to succeed now you you are there oh I believe you know I believe you I believe you know and the person fighting you is aggressive the person fighting you is going to no stops whatsoever the guy gave the mom and the dad the guys who go uh, in, 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 in Europe and also the, the organization will go with you that's how much the will because they know that the altar is powered by the sacrifice of the human attendant. It is I who determines the power. God is good. And I'm going to bring this down to our own salvation. We determine the power of God that moves in our life. God does not determine the power that moves. He already released all of it. It is you who decides how much power of God flows out of you. It's not God. And we have to stop blaming God. It is us. I, the sacrifice in my life, determines the power of the Holy Ghost working through me. If I don't have my own person to be sacrificed, there will be those people who say, okay, if God wills, if God wills, if God wills, if God wills, me, I believe he will. 2,000 years ago. Hi, Jack. How are you? Yes. He will how many years ago? John, how many years? 2,000 years ago. That is how far that God will. Nowadays we are acting, if God wills, if God wills, if God wills, then God willing, I get that job. God willing, I get married. God willing, do not God will. 2,000 years ago. My work now is to ensure there's a manifestation of the will. Because Jesus said, I've left you everything. If you believe, you look at the signs of this. So I determine the same way my enemies are sitting on an altar somewhere and they are pushing themselves. They are pushing themselves. The enemies of my father, my grandfather, my great grandfather, altars of my mother, my, my mother's 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 food. Whatever altars have been there throughout the entire family, I must note. But today, there might not be anyone in my family going to those altars. But those altars are called attendants. And if that attendant goes and puts a sacrifice there, because my family was connected there, 1902, I see the manifestation now. Because remember, altars are inherited. They are passed down. Good morning. So, if I'm going to go and they still be blessed. Remember who is on my side. Jesus made a public spectacle of the devil. Good morning. Hallelujah. I know some of you hear these stories, you get afraid. <laughs> All that. Say, say yes, I am. But say yes, we are. Why are you asking me that Mike is scared? <laughs> I'm not this and I said this talk was not to bring fear to you, but to give you the courage to stare the enemy in the eye and tell the enemy enough is enough. Enough is enough. But I will not sit back and accept and say this is going to be my portion. Enough is enough. Because I have the power, we can go to war. I can look at the devil and tell him, let's go. Because we have a habit of fearing those guys more. We don't believe God more. And you have to do things that push your faith to believe in your God more. How do we make it without Him? How do we win this battle without Him? We can't. You're dealing with something that has been there before you were born. All of you have a bloodline. 
There are things that are beyond you that you don't know, but God knows. But because you've never confronted them and you've never pushed in God to give you the strength, those things have taken over your life and they have become known. Hallelujah. Today I want us to pray against the things that have oppressed us and we have assumed that they are known. Band of animals. Basically, he took an animal, put it on the altar, and burnt it. No, really different than a band of animals. That is how they did those things. Yeah, that's how they did those things. So this one was different. When you hear he offered a band of animals, he just put the animal there and burnt it. The new covenant is where it's different. You don't do one of them anymore. God is good. God is good. We don't do the we don't do one of them anymore. But this work is simply deep to give it strength. Today we are going to pray. Have I answered you all that? Have I answered you? If someone has opened the bank of fire now, they need to come for a day of God is good. Yeah, we, we are past that stage because what happens in Calvary summarizes many things. In Calvary, you have Jesus there, he's the Lamb of God. When he's put upon that cross, the judgment of the Father is the fire that consumes him. So he becomes a bank of fire. Once and for all, you get offer. Jesus, the death of Jesus Christ, took away our bringing of animals. Amen. That's why if animals are being brought now, there's a problem. In fact, now animals being brought are going now, now being obtained from the night. Are you making sense? Yes. Right now, your offering cannot be an animal, but it will be bad or something. Because any blood that now is put forth that animal is being put into the end of food. Because every blood has a name. No blood has no name. Good morning. No blood has no name. We talk about these things that let, 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 later on and bring about the terms of all but understand these things. When you're going for dowry payment and a cow was slaughtered and as if they did what, they did what, they did what. It's good to know. It's good to know. Good morning. It's good to know. I told you once of a gentleman who came and told me that things were happening at the country. I don't know what animals were dying, to what they were sick. And he said to me that he was being told by another man of God to go home and they slaughter an animal to appease their ancestors. I just came out of my office. I had to meet him. Because what you are getting yourself into, how you are fueling those altars, Yo, what do you will see you've never seen before. The movie which is the rap after that. Ha, ah, it's a few of picture. I don't want to be a part of it. You cannot destroy a, a traditional altar by doing traditional things. You have to apply the blood of Jesus. Amen. So that's what you have to apply is the blood of Jesus. So we are not learning this that we go home and start calling the village and come, let's offer, let's raise an altar who wants to keep stones and put a cow on top. No. We're not doing that. We are learning that you may know who to battle and how to battle. But if there's something stopping your life, you may know how to battle. But remember, he made a public spectacle of the devil. Spiritual warfare begins from victory. You have to enter warfare with the mind that you have won. And you are praying for the manifestation of what you have won. You don't enter spiritual love with your mind that you're going to win. That I'm going to win. You're going to win your late. I have won. God is good. God is good. Yes. So if someone is saying that, I, that I'm going back to your point, that they offer a band offering and their prayers are not answered, that is not the reason why prayers are not answered. And I never like talking about why prayers are not answered. God is good. Hello? Yes, I never like that discussion because it's a discussion that takes prayer from the Holy Spirit and brings us to our humanity. 
And that makes things difficult. So you can't start telling people why your prayer or not will not answer. Are you the one who's receiving it? See, the one who receives the prayer is the one who knows. Yeah. I'm the one, if I am being asked something by my daughter, I'm the one who knows if she's asking the right way or not. You can, a third party cannot tell my daughter, I just think your father didn't like what you said. Did they, did they ask me? Did I say? Good morning. So what are we praying against today? We are praying against what has been oppressing our lives and we have assumed that it is normal. We are saying what is illegal in our lives must go. The altar that has witnessed against your life and has brought something into you that is abnormal but you have lived with it for so long it is normal or people have told you this is normal it can be even someone you love a doctor say this is normal it's not normal it's not normal as he is so am I on this earth and ask yourself that which is in my life that is holding me back is Jesus that way is he that way Amen.